the topic is physics and you so nobody knows what i am going to speak about right physics and you is a very topic like that so can someone tell me what are you expecting in this anybody anybody please unmute and tell unmute both video audio and tell me and then mute what are you expecting from this some participants please or i will call some i can see some face as i will call some anand krishnan can you talk uh sir i think namakku uh, physics unda namakku ini angotte nammada bhavile edella nilil namakku povan pattum oppa thanne edella nammala sadharana chindikkunnakale edella reethil vividhamaya reethile vyathasthamaya reethil chindikkan pattum anganeyka manasilaakkan saadhikkum adile random okay random the part seriyana vyathasthamaya reethil chindikkan pattum പക്ഷെ ഭാവിയിൽ എന്തൊക്കെ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുന്നതിനെ കുറിച്ച് അല്ല പ്രൈമറിലി പ്രാഥമികമായിട്ട് ഇത് അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് നമുക്ക് വേണമെങ്കിൽ സമയം കിട്ടിയാൽ അവസാനം ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്യാം കാരണം നമുക്ക് ഭാവിക്ക് പോകുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേ നമുക്ക് നമ്മളുടെ ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ അസ്ഥിവാരം വളരെ സ്ട്രോങ് ആയിരിക്കണം അപ്പൊ അതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് അസ്ഥിവാരത്തിനാണല്ലോ പ്രാധാന്യം ഒരു ബിൽഡിംഗ് കിട്ടുമ്പോൾ അതുകൊണ്ട് അടിസ്ഥാനം ബേസിക്സ് ഫണ്ടമെന്റൽ അതിനായിരിക്കും സ്ട്രെസ് ആൻഡ് ഐ വിൽ നോട്ട് ഗോ ബിയോണ്ട് മേ ബി ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ ബി എസ് സി സിലബസ് ഓക്കെ സോ വാട്ട് യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഇസ് സം questions some answers some things which are not there in the textbook and several links and uh, useful box useful uh, links and uh, useful suggestions that's all will be there so, so i i could tell you what is expected otherwise the expectation do not match it will lead to who said buddha said uh, the uh, reason for sorrow is uh, expectation <laughs> so that i would like to say that uh, up front i have got uh, a lot of nice pictures for you and please when i ask uh, a question please you can respond in between okay so i will make my presentation it is much visual so the presentation is important by any chance if there is some disruption power disruption or something we will uh, start again after uh, once it uh, gets I hope you can see the. I think the participants should pin Vijayan's presentation. Yeah, but in the YouTube, I am not able to see it. Maybe there's some delay. I think. Yeah, five second okay. delay is there. Ah, yeah, it is coming up there. Ah, yeah, fine. Okay, so we are ready to start. Yeah, you can note down my website address. there is a lot of uh, material there you can see that you can just note down that or search in google we start the lecture the first point i would like to make is you should not start any lecture with a picture of a naked man running around but it is permitted only in one case what is that one case if you are talking about archimedes then you are permitted if you are talking about physics yes then it is permitted otherwise don't uh, start your lecture like this i hope you understood what is uh, what uh, the whole story i don't have to a picture can tell you a full story very easily physics and you so what is your attitude to physics look at it carefully i'm going to change the screen quite fast it says you are like physics please note it is not you like physics the statement is you are like physics i don't like you and i don't understand you physics but i rely on you the world relies on physics whether you like it or whether you understand it you need it and that I hate you is this a attitude to physics for most people i hope not or i hope at least we will have some changes if it is if at all it is like that as we proceed what is physics there are a lot of possible answers for it if it uh, 
were a live class i would have asked many of you to stand up and tell that but i had given the answer there we all know that physics is about the forces of nature but we also know at higher level that it is also about the nature of forces we talk about forces we talk about energy we talk about how the force manifests itself so physics is not only about the forces of nature but also about the nature of forces you will appreciate it as you proceed in your studies in physics let's start with the fundamental question where are we then the first chapter of my talk where are we we are very comfortably sitting in uh, our own places and this is the webinar are you afraid of what you see in this uh, picture are you afraid of this happening is there anyone who is afraid of this happening we know that it will not happen so we, our statement is we are nowhere why why we are nowhere we are in a small college which is a part of a small state which is a part of, part of a small country which is a part of the big globe okay and the big globe is a part of the huge solar system and the solar system is only in one of the tails of the grand huge universe of the galaxy not the universe galaxy and that galaxy is only one millions or more than that billions and billions of galaxies part of a meta galaxy and all the meta galaxies form part of something else which you don't know even now so consider those distances the size of the universe and we feel immediately that we are nowhere we are lost so my second suggestion to you is do not start your lecture with a negative statement that itself is a negative statement it says do not start your lecture with a negative statement so i will also not do that i can't preach uh, something and practice something else so i will change it to a positive statement this is based positive statement look at that you are now here at time t equal to t1 and uh, space x equal to x1 y equal to y1 z equal to z1 these are very important in physics two quantities space and time are very important in physics so physics starts with drawing a coordinate system and saying you are now here and from here you start you are journeying in the phase space or whatever in any space you can describe it on the phase space and things like that what is space any definition somebody would like to tell me what is space definition of space don't tell it is in between this and that space is something between moon and mars that may be correct but that is not the definition of i want a definition of space without moon or Ma mars or matter or anything without matter try to define space okay that is a difficult question what do you do when you find a difficult question in the exam go to an easier question so i'll give you an easier question what is time please don't answer 11 o'clock that is what is the time my question is what is time oh time is the duration for the you know, the, uh, the clock to go from here to here and things like that or pendulum to go from that way to this way but i don't want to talk about pendulum i don't want to talk about spring or i don't want to talk about atoms emitting wavelength and not what is time with, without all that without matter can you think of uh, time so matter is very important right you have heard of uh, uh, the uh, ordinary matter anti matter you heard of dark matter there is one new kind of matter which is discovered it's called doesn't matter the student's attitude the teacher tells some fantastic things fascinating things students bother as if that is called doesn't matter anyway let's so uh, we don't get into that matter so can you define space and time without matter that's an exercise you can think about it we cannot solve this issue in a few minutes but i will give you my definition of time actually it's not my definition i forgot where i read time is a parameter which keeps varying continuously with time okay is that fine don't write it in an exam okay let's go back to our picture interesting picture of picture here we are at the crossroads of infinities this infinity of space infinity of time infinite what is the word in malayalam for infinite 
അനന്ത് ഒരു അന്തം ഇല്ലാത്തവൻ എന്ന് പറയില്ലേ അത് പറയാറുണ്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ പാരന്റ്സ് ഒക്കെ പറയാറുണ്ട് അന്തം ഇല്ലാത്തവനാണ് അന്തം മീൻസ് എൻഡ് അല്ലെ അന്തം ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ അനന്തം അനന്തം മീൻസ് ഇൻഫിനിറ്റ് അനന്ത ശയനം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇൻഫിനിറ്റിയിൽ ഇരിക്കുന്ന ആള് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കിടക്കുന്ന ആള് അപ്പൊ ആരാണ് അനന്ത ശയനം അമ്പലത്തില് അനന്ത ശയനം നടത്തുന്ന ആളാണോ അല്ല നമ്മൾ ഓരോരുത്തരുമാണ് അനന്ത ശയനം ബിക്കോസ് വി ആർ സിറ്റുവേറ്റഡ് അറ്റ് ദോസ് റോഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഇൻഫിനിറ്റീസ് ഓഫ് സ്പേസ് ആൻഡ് ടൈം സ്പേസ് ഇസ് ഇൻഫിനിറ്റ് അനന്തം ടൈം ഇസ് ഇൻഫിനിറ്റ് അനന്തം സോ അനന്ത ശയനം മീൻസ് സിറ്റുവേറ്റഡ് അറ്റ് സ്പേസ് ആൻഡ് ടൈം ദ ക്രോസ് റോഡ്സ് ഓഫ് സ്പേസ് ആൻഡ് ടൈം we don't know what is on that side what is on this side what will happen here what happen yesterday what will happen tomorrow okay we know in our life what happened yesterday before but what about the beginning of the universe what happened before the beginning of the before the big bang so we don't know we're really in an infinity of space and time look at this picture of course we all know this but we are often not aware of it what is the definition of up everyone on the world uh, on the globe do not agree on the definition of up right what is up of course this is silly i don't have to spend much time on it but we are not aware of it so let's take it forward this whatsapp concept you all want to go to uh, for higher studies many of you want to go to us for the higher studies america right okay i will tell you the most uh, easiest way to go to america the shortest path to america you should take the globe kerala may be here suppose kerala is here okay this is oriented in some arbitrary fashion but suppose you take it and kerala put kerala on top then some city of the us will be at the bottom so what all you have to do is dig a big uh, through hole and then you just jump in you will reach united states see any other path any other path takes long this is the easiest way to go but of course you know that uh, i'm kidding and you can't uh, do that because you will say there is lava there is temperature pressure so you can't really do that okay and the earth is spinning so you can't do that yeah right all that is correct but let's do a gadangan experiment ഗഡങ്കൻ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ യമണ്ടൻ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് മാതിരി ഒന്നാണ് എന്താണ് ഈ ഗഡങ്കൻ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ തോട്ട് എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് യു കാൻ ഇമാജിൻ യു കാൻ ഇമാജിൻ സംതിങ് ആൻഡ് ടു ഗെറ്റ് എ കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ക്ലിയർ യു കാൻ മേക്ക് അപ്രോക്സിമേഷൻസ് ഇൻ ഗോ ഹെഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് എ ഗഡങ്കൻ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ലെറ്റ്സ് ടു എ തോട്ട് എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ലെറ്റ് ഇസ് അസ്യൂം ദാറ്റ് ദർ ഇസ് നോട്ട് സ്പിന്നിങ് ഓർ ഇറ്റ് ഡസൻറ് എഫക്ട് എസ് ലെറ്റ് ഇസ് എഫക്ട് അസ്യൂം ദാറ്റ് ഓർ ദ തെർമൽ ഇഫക്ട്സ് ലാവ ഓൾ ദോസ് തിങ്സ് ആർ നോട്ട് ദർ സപ്പോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ യൂണിഫോം സ്പിയർ and suppose that you can drill okay so whatever came to your mind first all that are removed now. then if you jump it will you reach or what will happen to you you all know part of the answer you fall down toward the center of earth so from the top you fall down toward the center of earth up to that we know what will happen eventually can anyone try and answer what will happen and why will it happen please unmute and talk jinu who is speaking jinu or who ah yes jinu jinu is for you malayalam nammala aa oru center inde aa with respect at oscillate cheyvaru adin ende kaaranam evadu the oscillation varunnad uttara seriyana pakshe ende kaaranam kaaranam a simple ഇതുവരെ നമ്മൾ വീണിട്ട് എർത്തിന്റെ സെന്ററിൽ എത്തുന്നവരെ എല്ലാവർക്കും അറിയാം പിന്നെ എന്താ സംഭവിക്കും പിന്നെ എന്താ സംഭവിക്കുന്നത് ജസ്റ്റ് ആലോചിച്ച് നോക്കും നമ്മൾ അവിടെ എത്തി ഇനി എന്താ അപ്പൊ നമ്മുടെ സ്പീഡ് എത്ര ആയിരിക്കും something is dropping and what will be the speed after some time uh, distance and all that you know that all that story right yes sir so when you reach here okay what i will do is i will the question i will partly answer and drop the answer is that uh, you will oscillate you will never reach but i would like to somebody to just know down and think of some explanation and uh, then we will take it up question hour we will take it up 
So I'll just note down what we have left. Okay. Yeah, we'll proceed. Okay, I read it at that and uh, proceed. You all know that there is theoretical physics, experimental physics. Actually, they're all part of the same game. Without theory, the experiments, without theory, the experiments don't work. And even if you do the experiment, you have to understand what it is, you have to analyze the data. So simulation, theory, simulation, experiment, all that go hand in hand. Today, all are very powerful. You should do experiment, you should plan theoretically first, and then do an experiment which is theoretically okay, and then do simulation and try to see what will happen first. So it's all part of the same thing. It's all part of the same thing. How do you think the wheel was discovered without any theory and simulation? Wheel was not discovered like this. Wheel was, why? Because there was no computer. Somebody will say there is no computer in those days. Nowadays, colleges are given, all students are given computers, at least in Tamil Nadu, I don't know about Kerala and all that. But we are all given one computer. Instead of desktop and laptop, it is called the net top computer. So those people had the net top computer. They worked all this on the net top computer, all the theory and simulation and procedure. So there is not really big difference between experimental physics, theoretical physics, and all that come together. You need concepts clear, your basic physics clear before you analyze the data of an experiment. It is not that if something falls on your head and immediately you discover all the physics, the, the laws of physics, it's not like that. If an Apple computer falls on your head, yeah, you will get an injury, but other than that, you will not be able to. By the way, this picture also reminds me of something else. Suppose really a computer fell on Newton's said from some other planet, some where the sciences advanced, it is possible. They would have made such a computer and they would have come in a spacecraft and shown a computer to Newton. What will Newton say? I don't know. What is this? It's all mythology. This is all non-physics. Non it's all humbug. This is not according to the principle of physics. It cannot happen. Why? Because he doesn't know any electricity magnets. All electricity magnetism, electronics, computing, everything came after Newton's life. So Newton does not know about a device like this. Okay, that is just incident. So Apple is good for your physics as well as your physics. We can't have a lecture without talking about Newton and Apple falling on Newton's head. Newton's first law, let's talk about Newton's first law. We all know Newton's first law from childhood onwards. <laughs> been those who are uh, trying, uh, write, uh, writing JE exams would have started from kindergarten, uh, what is Newton's law and all that. So Newton's law has two important concepts, the concept of inertia and the concept of force. So let us look at the, the first, for the, the next few minutes, we'll look at some of the Newton's laws and something which is not given in the books. What the question to be asked is, what makes a system change its state of motion? If a system doesn't change the state of motion, no questions asked. If you comfortably sleep uh, in the bed, nobody will come and make you up. I'm at equilibrium. If your mother comes and makes you up, no, no, I'm at equilibrium, no questions asked. Only when you want to break the equilibrium or you want to change the state of motion, you need force. Okay? So this is called, uh, this is the state of motion. And this is a change in state of motion. How did the change uh, occur? So that is definition of inertia. And this is the definition of force. Force is that which changes or tries to change the state of motion. So the state of motion is now changed. Okay? So what makes the system change its state of motion depends on many factors. Depends on force primarily. So how do we state uh, Newton's first law? Don't write it down in any exam or anything. You will continue your state of motion until there is sufficient commotion. That's what Newton has taught us. Let's proceed. I will give you some exercise based on Newton's first law and second law. We all know that a heavy object can be lifted on the surface of moon. Okay. I said I have written here cow, but I'm really not talking about a cow. It's a little cough which you can somehow lift. Okay, little calf, you can, cow, you cannot uh, think of lifting. 
So you are trying to lift that. Is it easier on the moon compared to Earth? That's the question. Is this, this question is not really related to uh, Newton's law, but oh yeah, I see a lot of yes and no and all that. Yes, it is easier. I think most people agree. Majority says it is uh, yes, you can lift it. Fine, let's accept that. Now comes the question. What will happen when you are lifting a cow? The bull gets annoyed and bull comes charging at you. The bull comes charging at you. So now the question is, is it easier on the moon to stop a charging bull? Just as it is easier to lift a cow on moon, is it also easier to stop a charging bull? Okay, again, don't say that uh, there is no air on the moon, there is no bull on the moon and all that. No, <laughs> not that. Let's assume all those uh, ideal conditions. I mean, I don't know whether it's ideal or not, but let's assume all those uh, complications are not there. Yeah, most people say no. Why? Then you know the difference. So many people have written, Renjita has written no. Can Renjita please tell us why no? Uh, technical reason for that? Agnes says, uh, because we are also experiencing. The point, the crucial point here is, in one case, you are talking about the weight. And the second, the first case. The second case, you are talking about the mass. Mass and weight are different. How does it come in? Here it is a weight. So acceleration. The, to, what, to what acceleration the planet are, pulls it. That's what matters. But what matters here is, Momentum, change of momentum per time. That is force. Force is unit. the rate of change of momentum. So you have to change the momentum to stop something. You have to bring the momentum to zero. I said charging bullet. So the initial velocity is very large. The final velocity should be zero. So what matters here is mass, not uh, weight. So this is a subtle difference which I have to think about. Now. We know that the moon is always in a state of free fall. Does anybody have uh, a doubt? The stone will fall down because the earth attracts. Earth attracts everything. And it, uh, what is the range of gravitational force? Infinity. So earth attracts everything. OK, let's uh, worry about, don't worry, not worry about other uh, objects. The earth attracts the stone, and the earth also attracts the moon. So Chandrayaan become very, has become very easy. We have to wait for the moon to come and uh, fall on Earth and then to get into that, onto that. That way, can we do that? Will it really reach us? So the question is, when will it finally reach us? Or why doesn't it, of course, you know that it won't reach. So why doesn't it fall? Why doesn't the moon fall? Okay, question number two, which you can think of. If we are not able to answer in this uh, meeting, you can always uh, look up the Google uh, something like that. Okay? Somebody just said uh, centripetal acceleration or something. But when I ask a question, please don't say word. Something, anything, anything about you ask anything about uh, flight, people will say Bernoulli. Bernoulli, is it Bernoulli? That will be the answer. Is it Bernoulli? Is not an answer. We should say what is happening. So centripetal force, calling names. That you can call your friends when you don't like them. You can call them names. But in physics, you have to give a logical explanation. So somebody can get ready with a logical explanation. We'll take it up later. And another question, sub-question. If the moon is in a free state of all, which it is, why there is weight at all on the moon? If something is on free fall, the weight will not be there, experienced. But what have we experienced some? Wait anyway, it's not uh, wait free. So what? That's the next question to be answered. Somebody can remember all the questions at the end and we'll generate the answers. Now I want to bring to you, okay, we have covered first and second law. Now we'll talk about the third law. Newton's third law brings you a very important uh, and interesting thing. I have written there, BSc students can understand. Those who know calculus can understand. Please go through the steps. It is very easy. It's just two steps. I have written the Newton's third law, and in two steps, I have got an equation which says conservation of linear momentum. 
right? So you can actually verify this by yourself and you can convince yourself that Newton's third law is actually a statement of the conservation of linear momentum. Okay, conservation laws are primary, more important than Newton's laws or any other laws. Conservation laws are a very, very interesting and very primary space in physics, primary position in physics. I will tell you a short story. Newton, Isaac Newton was giving a lecture in a college on his laws. And uh, of course, uh, he came on a horse cart. The other vehicles were not invented at that time. So he tied the horse uh, onto the tree, nearby tree, and uh, he was giving lecture. And it was not an AC room because AC was not discovered at that time. So the windows were open and the horse was also listening to the lecture. And Newton was talking about Newton's third law. At the end of the lecture, everybody appreciated and he went back. He went back, got into the carriage and asked the horse, okay, pull. Suddenly the horse turned back and said, how can I pull the cart? Okay, I can pull, but what the use? The cart will not move. Newton was shocked. Why do you say so? No, I didn't say, you only told. Every force, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the force exerted by me on the cart is equal and opposite to the force exerted by the cart on the horse. So they cancel each other and we cannot move. You only told, you just explained, I was listening to your lecture, right? I will re repeat it just like F12 is equal to minus F21. I have written that the force exerted by the horse on the car is exactly equal and opposite to the force exerted by the car on the horse. So, why do we move? Sadarna Chodinga Chodcha, Laru, and a prime. We hint to the Ram, clue the Ram one. Okay, clue the Ram. None of the clue the Ram one. We know two matram, Madanguna Kalugan, Dayo, who know two Mogun made our world. Punjani Master Kalyanakulu. We'll see the answer later. Let me note it down. See, sometimes it may overstep, so people who have other work can go, and uh, those who can find the time can sit back and uh, look at the questions. Otherwise, those they can always uh, see the YouTube later. Okay. So, Newton's third law is, is uh, some people have given the correct uh, answers. We'll see it later. We'll discuss it later. Newton's third law is a con statement of conservation of linear momentum. So just like we rephrase the first law, let us look at the let us look at Newton's third law in this fashion and rewrite Newton's third law. Suppose an object, how do we do problems in Newton's third law? An object moves mass m m2 moves with a velocity v2, and another object moves with a mass m1 and velocity v1, and they collide. That's Newton's third law. So how do you write this? What will happen in this? The Newton's law says the linear momentum before lunch is equal to linear momentum after lunch. That's a statement of Newton's law. So the point here is Newton's law is actually a restatement of the conservation of linear momentum. Okay, laws came first. These concepts were developed much later. The uh, symmetry and the uh, the, those things at higher level, you people don't, don't even hear of it in the MSc level. G Shankar Kuru Pedi Tender Nala Mananyan Paranduni Nul Piriella Nala Mananyan Paranduni Nul Piriella Piri Nala Namu Vare with your Sunday. So, our question now is why does the flame have that shape and that color? Why is the color not the same everywhere? There is a blue color which is not uh, shown here, yellow color, red color, all sort of colors. So not all sort of colors, some of these colors. And black also. So why does it have a shape? Again, if you want to have a clue, this is the clue. Suppose you go to the outer space. Here I have to make a clarification. Outer space. People say that outer space, there is no force or anything like that. Nothing like that. All gravitational forces of our galaxies uh, of the planet, everything goes to infinity. So when you say outer space, it really, outer space can be anything out, uh, out uh, the, uh, after the, you know, the uh, solar system and the galaxy and all that, in between also. That is called outer space. So it's not that there is no force anywhere in the outer space. But in physics, when we normally say outer space, 
we talk about a location where all the net the all the forces cancel out and there is no net force the attraction due to all different things cancel out and there is no net force suppose you go there the clue is this the clue comes in the form of a question why does uh, i mean uh, the question is why the shape and why the color okay the shape part i am talking now about the shape part what will be the shape and of course also what will be the color if you go to that place zero gravity all the net the, the, all the forces cancel out and there is no net gravity suppose you go there what will be the shape yeah i have seen some people have given the answers we will discuss it yeah convection somebody said so convective flow is absent in microgravity it's called microgravity not exactly zero gravity that's what people say so that is how your candle will look like in mattullavarkai swayam katti eriyna candle ingane irikkum ingane irikkum kaanudhu avade poi kanyal okay we move on to the next topic have a good look at the picture first picture is before the apple fell and the second picture is after the apple fell immediately after the apple fell but if you look closely i have uh, modified the picture original picture and you will see some objects there what are they uh, they are not waves somebody wrote waves what are they have you seen it anywhere in your lab those objects ah newton's rings okay now this is the point which i want to talk about newton newton's theory was that light is a series of particles which yeah many and many correct answers are coming and then huygens who lived around the same time huygens believed light goes as waves so it is is it waves or is it particles yes. physics can answer things only by an experiment so somebody brought a newton didn't believe in waves at all no light cannot go as waves that's what newton said but somebody brought an experiment somebody showed an experiment which cannot be explained with particles which can be explained only with waves and what are the phenomena like that which cannot be described with particles but which can be described only by wave nature that is interference and diffraction so the patterns like what you see that is the experimental proof that newton was wrong and who invented these rings what are they called newton so newton himself the discovery or the invention of newton himself disproved himself this a theory if newton is the one who invented or rather discovered it is always there in nature and all that newton discovered this newton's rings and that can be explained only if you have the wave theory that was very interesting so if newton was very intelligent he would have supported the wave theory he would have believed that okay wave theory is also fine but if newton was extremely intelligent the physics would be different he would have done this of course newton is intelligent he is a genius not doubt about it okay if he didn't know electromagnetic theory it is just because all that came after he lived but the point here was about the wave nature which came uh, which was proposed by huygens at around the same time which newton opposed so finally the uh, light uh, particle or a wave if you look at that picture and meditate for a few minutes you will know whether the light is a particle or a wave okay now you all understood that particle or wave and let's move uh, to a very interesting story of the electron the confusing story of the electron the story of the electron is that j j thomson got his uh, nobel prize for inventing the particle electron the charged particle electron for that it is a fantastic discovery that's why it was given the nobel prize but after 30 years around 30 years somebody else gets a nobel prize and who is that that is thomson's son j j thomson's son George Pagett Thomson. He did an experiment along with Davison, and uh, of course Davison and Germer experiment is another experiment parallelly which proved his experiment. This young man's experiments proved along with other experiments that electron also behaves like waves. So it is really confusing. 
particles behave like waves and what we thought as particles like electrons behave like waves and we, what we thought of as life uh, as a wave which is light which behaves as particles so both of them behave like so we are really confused what is the reality is there something called reality people have done experiments of interference with electrons and light and all that so the it's like a, a teacher was explaining this when you do an experiment like the compton scattering light behaves like light and electrons behave like particles compton scattering you all done you use a collision of two particles collision of proton and electron and all but when you do interference it behaves like a wave then the smart student in the class had a doubt sir when i am not doing the experiment when i am doing compton effect it behaves like particle when i do interference it behaves like a wave so when i am not doing the experiment but teachers are also smart are smart don't think that only students are smart so the teacher said in physics experiment is like when you are not doing the experiment you can't talk about what it is good answer right so light and electron they look into your practical record when you are about to do the experiment they look at the schedule okay you are doing a compton effect we will behave like particles next day you are doing a diffraction then we will behave like waves this is an interesting book called tomkins in wonderland tomkins in wonderland by george gamo the great uh, george gamo very nice that book is uh, i think it should be available in your library please read it fantastic book this story is from that even if you don't read it it's okay i will read a relevant part of it it's about a retire about to retire a bank clerk of some 50 plus about to retire bored in life he is a hero what a nice hero just imagine the hero entry in a movie our hero entry is is a bald old uh, bank clerk who is about to retire no no connection with physics but then there is a professor who comes and gives a lecture in that village public lecture and our hero goes and attends the lecture he was interested in physics in childhood so he goes and attends the lecture i think you can understand what will happen if a physics professor gives a lecture on relativity quantum mechanics and all that and a retiring bank employee who didn't do any physics uh, college in the college he attends that lecture what will happen some comment please what will happen if a professor gives a lecture on quantum mechanics and a old bank employee attends that questions and questions no it is simpler answer is simpler he is an old tired person he sleeps simple answer he sleeps so our hero enters uh, sleeping there was a cathedral thing and the artists were all uh, drunk uh, so the, they went to abroad and that particular uh, brand of uh, liquor he was not used to so hanuman was uh, the person, he was actually he couldn't wake up after the drink and the time has come and he has to appear then they didn't know what to do time and he is still sleeping so they brought hanuman some four people carried him and said this is the hindu god who is so powerful that uh, once he wakes up the whole world will be destroyed something like that. they managed to escape uh, from that okay so what are we talking about <laughs> you are not talking about religion you are talking about uh, the uh, yeah what were you talking about actually yeah what will he do he sleeps our hero sleeps our hero enters sleeping and then he dreams that's the good thing about sleep somebody said you have to live up to your dreams so what is the first step for living up uh, having a dream sleep so you should occasionally sleep in the class and then you will have dream and he dreams fantastically read that book he reads he has gone to a world where the speed of light is very small the value of planck's constant is very high and he sees all weird things funny things happening there and the professor also comes in the dream to explain that okay this is happening an elephant then okay i want uh, to steal the charm of that buy that book and read it or go to the college and read it tomkins in wonderland that book by job thermo that's the story about it ha huh. why he gives an explanation to our relevant what is the context what is the relation relevance here when nobody is looking this is the question when i am looking it is either a particle when i am doing an experiment 
light and electron behave like either a particle or a wave. But when nobody is looking, what will happen? That is the question the student asks. The professor says, when nobody is looking, nobody can know how they behave, and your question is meaningless. That's what he says. Okay, so you can read more in that book. As I said in the beginning, I will provide you different links and pointers which you have to go and pick up. And uh, the ultimate answer came from quantum mechanics. So we move on to the next part, understanding matter and radiation. You know this person. He says quantum mechanics is a description of the behavior of matter and light in all its details. And in particular, the happenings at an atomic scale. Things on a very small scale behave totally in a totally strange way. And we can't really have models. So is light a particular wave? That is his answer. They do not behave like waves. They do not behave like particles. They do not behave like clouds. See, we, how do, what do you mean by explaining? Explaining means telling something which we don't understand in terms of what we understand. What we understand are these things, particles, waves, and all that. If that is not going to behave like for that, so our pictures are not complete. The particle picture or wave picture is not complete. The ultimate answer is the Schrodinger equation, quantum mechanics. So read more in what Feynman says about this. The famous experiment and all that are there. Feynman's uh, experiment on dual nature and all that. So we go to the next part of our uh, uh, next part, how to enjoy physics. Richard Feynman is the greatest uh, physics teacher, perhaps, and he says, I wonder why, why something happens. I wonder why I wonder. I wonder why I wonder why. That's the level of uh, understanding. If you want to enjoy physics, you have to do that. Now let's go to an example from Feynman's class. We are trying to enjoy physics. So let's have an example. The example is uh, that uh, he asks, OK, I think it is not completely written here. Yeah. The question was this. Feynman asked the class, a toy, a toy dog. Nowadays, battery toys are more frequent. But several years back, battery toys were not there. The, you have to wind the spring. You have to wind the spring, and some dog will move. That was the toy. So why does the toy dog move? The question is, why does a toy dog move? And Feynman said, the toy dog moves because the sun is shining. Then the smart student immediately objects, no, sir. What has the sun to do with uh, my toy dog? It moved because I wound the spring. Potential energy, kinetic energy. I wound the spring. That's why. OK, then Feynman coolly asks, why are you able to wind? Where did you get that energy to wind the spring? I eat. What do you eat? I eat plants. Now you may be wondering, I eat animals. So it's not applicable to me. No. If you eat uh, animals, who, what do the poor animals eat? Plants. So it comes back to plants. So, and where do plants get energy? Because the sun is shining. So what you can do after the lecture is go to your younger brother or uh, friend and ask them this question. Prove that the bullock cart is a nuclear powered vehicle. The statement is, the bullock cart is actually a nuclear powered vehicle. The clue is this story. The clue is this story. And you have to find the answer and you have to fool your friends, uh, brothers, little brothers, uh, all those people. Okay. Feynman gives lectures in a very nice way. All of you should read the famous Feynman lectures. I'm quoting one incident from that. That is the famous uh, the question where the, there was a student who failed in physics. So because he failed in physics, uh, he could not get a better job. He was a traffic inspector. And the traffic inspector is standing at the junction. And our professor is driving at 70 kilometers per hour. The speed limit is 60 kilometers. So the student, oh, now he's coming. He failed me in physics. Now he's driving. So he goes and stops the professor. Sir, I am arresting you. Why are you arresting me? Because 70 kilometers per hour. You are going at 70. Who said I am going for 70 kilometers? You know that the college is only two kilometers from here. And who is going to travel for one hour? It's that just two minutes I reach there. 
the policeman start thinking okay what i meant is if you go like this you will cover 70 kilometers who said just just look at that there is a curve in the road if i go like this i will hit against the tree if i go like this i will hit against the tree so what is the problem then he thinks no 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 actually what happens is if you go like this uh, he thinks he doesn't know what to say so he says if you go like this after one hour you will cover 70 kilometers ha ah, very good but can you arrest me before i do the job, uh, do the crime you bring uh, gold for uh, 30 uh, kilos and hundreds and hundreds and kilos of gold and finally uh, sometimes you will be caught that's all but if you have to be caught otherwise you can live happily ever after but if you have to be caught you have to do you have to prove that you have done something wrong so how can you arrest me now for some crime i am going to do after one hour then he says no 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 no, no. what happens is uh, at this instant you are going at 60 km 70 km per hour then the professor says at this instant i am not going anywhere at time t equal to t1 x equal to x1 at time t2 t equal to t2 x equal to x2 so i'm at this instant i am not going anywhere okay you all have uh, uh, you all know this what is the definition of velocity what is the answer to this puzzle bring in calculus the concept of limit consider a small distance delta x in a small time delta t you squeeze delta t tends to zero you squeeze delta t to zero and as delta t tends to zero you have dx by dt that's velocity that is how the but then of course the person who failed in physics could not explain all that so professor was not arrested now i start giving you some take homes i am going to give you a lot of take homes please take all that whatever i am giving the first take home is this there are two books written by uh, not exactly written by but about feynman one is surely you are joking mr feynman and the subtitle is adventures of a curious character that book earlier it was available on road sites for some 30 rupees and all that some years back it must be if it is not you ask your teacher or parent to buy it for you first book especially surely you are joking mr feynman i am only talking about the first book because i am sure if you read the first book you will automatically read the second book buy and read the second book also second book is for a little advanced uh, you i mean uh, ug uh, pg ug final year people but anybody can even the common people can read the first book so that's your that's my first take home for you two interesting and inspiring books they are very different from any book we have read do you know that feynman used to repair radios when he was a child when he was in a school boy feynman used to repair radios okay that's fine everybody would might have tried that but what is his method of repairing radios he doesn't need a screwdriver and uh, all that he won't open the radio and look for various components he will listen to the sound of the radio and tell you what is wrong that is how he will repair that many such interesting stories are there it's all interesting stories related to physics related to thinking and you will all enjoy it the first second book is about his uh, adventures even he became uh, the famous scientist his adventures with physics continue for example, he used to break locks and all that in the most secret uh, thing in the, uh, the USA, that is the atom bomb project and all that. So he used to play with uh, intelligence, he used to play. So all the stories are there and the uh, Challenger disaster and all, all those, uh, all that is written in the second book. That's my first take home. You will have a few more take homes. If you have noted it down, you just have to look for these books. And if it is affordable, you buy it. Otherwise, ask the college to buy 10 copies or 20 copies or ask your parents to buy it for you. The second take home I would like to give you is the name Walter Levin. Many of you may be already familiar. Attend Walter Levin's lectures. He is teaching a simple pendulum in this picture. How do you teach simple pendulum? By yourself becoming a compound pendulum. That is what he does. And uh, he teaches this way. So you, the, my second take home for you is, for those who are not new to uh, him, is to look for Walter Levin in YouTube and look at his lectures, the way he demonstrates every concept. Yeah, some people are already familiar with him. If you are not familiar, please have a look.
he is a very popular figure you know i think all of you might have seen his books but there is much more beyond he was a professor in iit kanpur retired and after retiring he is going to villages and teaching people and doing experiments for them and all that so he is really genius and he contributes to society continues to contribute to the society so he has a channel please note down that address of the channel very interesting demos lectures courses all fantastic explanation see how he has written on the board very clear very clear and uh, along with the demos so he has a lot of talks and demos there is something called anveshika you can look at what it is by iapt he is the vice president of iapt so primarily first you can look at that uh, website this is the next uh, take home number 3 which i would like to give take home number 4 he is again an iit product arvind gupta he did this uh, post graduation in iit and became got a very fantastic job but he left all that and now his uh, aim is to popularize uh, thinking and science wonder from waste kind of thing, all over the villages chief he he also he does demos he ask you how to make things but zero cost practically zero cost a few rupees you don't have to ask your parents or anybody you can do it so the joy of indian toys is a book by him not only the demos you don't have to buy these books if you go to his website just search for arvind gupta instead of remembering a uh, complicated uh, web title just search for the name you will see lot of books there lot of books interesting books in fact too many books are there and too many demos not only on physics but also other related some of these pictures are from some of those uh, demos so this is my next uh, take home now let's talk about cv ram the man who thought differently that is how he was able to make the discovery people have seen light coming out of uh, objects but he thought differently he also saw light coming from a liquid but he thought differently it's not because of impurity fluorescence it is because of a new process happening at molecular level that is what he has discovered he went to the united states to give everywhere he went everywhere to give lectures on the raman effect so he demonstrated raman effect in the in one university and after that they were all very happy and there was a party and uh, drinks were supplied you know in uh, abroad in uh, universities and all like abroad that they use drinks also i don't know many people drink all over the world but only when indians drink they start beating their wives and all sort of uh, issues losing their money and all that so anyway so they asked raman to drink but raman said he will not drink why don't you drink raman doesn't drink so he said i came here to demonstrate the raman effect on alcohol and not the alcohol effect on raman that is what he said okay raman's contribution is explanation of why the sky is blue if you search the internet you will see a book like this i mean it's not a lecture the lecture was not recorded it is a lecture of course it is written books and papers in nature and all that but what i am talking about here is a simple lecture given to school students by cv raman if text is available free i think some people are marketing it also but it's available free in the internet if you don't uh, see it you can uh, email me i will send you and uh, it is very nice you everyone should read it this this is the quote from that he starts like this why is the sky blue because the sky is there and i am there that's what he starts then he says the best way of answering a question is to raise more questions that is how it goes fantastic he says yeah that's what he has uh, written you see a little the message of that talk you see a little and even this little is enough to trigger you to a world a wonder world of physics that's the inspiration he gives but then is the sky blue who said the sky is blue this is a picture of the sky so he asked the question why why the sky is not blue why is the sky not blue in the night he asked several questions the best way to answer a question is to ask several questions what are clouds why do they have that shape why are they hanging at that particular height why don't the clouds fall down why is ice colorless and snow white if the sky is blue due to scattering that's what everybody will say if at the moment i ask this question today will say everyone will say scattering 
If the sky is blue due to scattering, let's say dust, if all the dust is swept off, all the clouds, clouds are swept off the sky, then it is even more blue, not less blue. So this is, and why is the sky not blue? All these questions are discussed and answered in that free available, freely available book, uh, talk by Sigila. So that's my next uh, take home. Sorry, I uh, that is wrong. Not demos and demos are not there. That, I think that should have written been somewhere else. It's just a book, just a booklet. I mean, just uh, read a PDF file is available. So just read his uh, message. I'm going, not going to discuss the message because that is there in the book. And once you go and read the book, you will really see it in its full glamour. Now I'm going to tell you how you can become a genius. How do you become a genius? Go and sit under the nearest apple tree. Will it work? No, it won't work. And Kerala, don't try it. Because Kerala, not only we don't have apple trees, we have coconut trees. And if it falls on your head, the situation is not going to be very pleasant. You are not going to discover creative and imaginative things. So, what? Okay, what is the method? There must be some other method. That is what uh, Louis Pasteur has said. Chance, okay, we'll all have such chances in our life, but chance prefers only a prepared mind. A prepared mind. You must be thinking about the problem. He was thinking about the, or you can start thinking once you have some chance. But what the books don't tell you, books tell you as if the apple fell and he discovered gravitation. No, after that, many years later, only the theory came out. Lot of struggle, lot of thinking, lot of modeling, making models, equations, differential equation, and that's how finally it came out. In fact, he could not even write it in a proper language because there was no calculus at that time. So he invented calculus and did all that. That is a long story. Similarly, this uh, picture at the middle, you can see the other picture, which is the Kekula's uh, story. Kekula, Fleming, there are a lot of such stories. Well, example, no, not stories, real life uh, examples. Kekula was thinking about the benzene ring. He was sure that it is not a linear chain, like you all know the chemistry of benzene and all that. C2H2, then not that kind of uh, chain, the uh, what is called the homologous series. So once it is six, there can be a different compound. And that compound will not be linear. That much was clear because the properties are related to the structure. Okay. But then he was, he was sleeping and suddenly he had a dream. Of, okay, we all think of, sometimes we do have dreams of snakes and we get uh, frightened. But because he was thinking about it, because he has done the homework, he could connect it and say that it is that. There was a story of one person who wanted to become very rich. Everybody wants to become very rich, right? So I'll give you the method how to become very rich. So this man, every day morning, he will wake up and do some tapas and say, Oh God, let me get the first prize in this lottery. That's a very good method to become rich. He kept on praying for a few days and finally God appeared before him. And what did he do? Give him the first prize? No. God scolded him. You fellow, first go and buy a ticket. Then only even I can do with a capital I. I can do anything. So that's the story. It's not just apple falling and uh, sleeping and dreaming. Lot you can't, uh, you have to do your part of it. You have to go and buy a ticket. Please always remember that. Then, of course, chance will be there. That's what Louis Pasteur said. Chance favors a prepared man. That's how we can become a genius. Okay, sir, you are talking about genius, but I am i don't get marks. I, that's all for the top fellow who gets first rank. Can others become genius? There was a path breaking discovery by Catherine Cox, research in, researcher in psychology in the year 1926. Till then, people thought some people are genius, some people make achievement, and the rest just stay there. That was the theory before that. But her research, you can read about, about her research. I will just tell you the result of that research. It is not the high intelligent people, top intelligent people who become successful. High intelligence along with great degrees of persistence is more rewarding than highest intelligence along with the lower degrees of perseverance. So, Depending upon your intellectual level, you may have to do a little more of perseverance, then you can become a genius. 
people say that even the uh, biggest brain has used only 10% of the uh, power. You just use 10.1% of your power and you can become brilliant. This is not uh, just uh, what you call advice uh, given to pacify you or anything like that. This is a result, result of research. And after that, many other studies were there. If you have any doubt about what I'm saying, please go and read what Catherine Six, uh, Cox uh, invented. That's there in Google. You can search and read. So there is no excuse for becoming genius. All of us can become genius. You may ask me, sir, are you a genius? Then my answer is, when I was of your age in BSc or pre-degree or uh, college, nobody came and gave a talk like this, how to become a genius. So you don't have that excuse. I am giving you, I am telling you how to become a genius. You have to think differently. What is the purpose of your life? Many people have different purposes of your life. The purpose of your life is to find the purpose of your life. Who said that? Buddha. Gautam Buddha said the purpose in life is to find your purpose and give your whole heart and soul to it. Whether it is physics or biology is secondary. Physics is fun. Let's give me uh, let's uh, give you some examples of thinking differently in physics. All this now we are moved out to uh, enjoying physics to how you can become engineer. Think differently is the answer. I give you the situation. I release a ball. Football. I release it and I'm telling you it went up. You all know what happens when I release something. If I release something, it will fall down. But now you have to believe me. I released a ball and it, it went all the way up. Can you explain this? I think here I will pause and wait for an explanation. In fact, there is more than, there are more than one correct answer. It can happen and there are more than one correct answer. I think we're running short of time, so I will. Again, don't tell some names and uh, nobody got Bernoulli's principle. What does it mean? I want an explanation. Don't just give a name or a equation or anything. Just explain what is happening. Okay, I think one correct answer Murali Dharan has written it is filled with helium gas. Okay, I didn't tell you what is inside. I just told I released the ball and it went down. So it could be a gas which is lighter than air. It's as simple as that. It, it will go up. So think beyond. That is why it's called what's called thinking differently. Everybody sees all the sky and all that, but uh, somebody starts thinking differently and then you find what is the reason for that. Okay, so this is, uh, but there is one more answer. Somebody said, I'm standing upside down. No, that is not the correct. Okay, uh, in, at a different level, you fine, but not a physics answer. So there is one more answer for this. Zero gravity. Zero gravity will not go up. It will just stay where it is. Simple. I didn't tell you where I am standing. I am standing at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. I am standing at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and releasing the ball. Where will it go? It will go only up. Next question. Next example. We all know from UKG that a convex lens is used to converge light. Anybody has a doubt? We all know it. Okay. Now my question is, can you use a convex lens as a diverging lens? Yeah, somebody has got the answer. You just have to stand away from the lens. Otherwise, you have to think of complicated questions by filling the lens with some medium and putting the whole thing in another medium and all that. But this is the simplest answer. See, is it converging or diverging? Is it converging or diverging now? So think beyond. You know, uh, remove your limitation. You're all thinking only up to the, most of us are thinking only up to the focus. Imagine, they release the boundary and think further. That's how we become a genius. Now let's talk about the three brilliant people. There's a movie called Three Brilliant Students, right? Or the name was something else. Okay, now let's talk about these students. There was, uh, <laughs> there was a principal in a college and uh, the, all the games were going on, cricket game was going on and people are cutting the class. So the principal wanted to prevent it and put a fine. The principal said, whoever comes, whoever misses one day, 
will have to give a fine. Whoever misses another day will have to square that fine and give that amount. Whoever comes on the third day will have to square that amount and give that fine. Like that it goes. Then the principal is very kind. So first day only 10 paisa. No first day if you miss only 10 paisa. Then these three idiots uh, miss something like one week. You can calculate actually. 10 square square is how much? 10 square paisa second day. 10 square square paisa next day. 10 square 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 paisa next day. Like that. So the first fellow came with a big bag, bag full of notes and delivered that to the principal. And the second fellow came, smiled at the principal and just gave one rupee and escaped. Principal said, yes, didn't punish. He just gave one rupee. How did he manage? You know the amount is going to be 10 square, 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 square. You can think of it. It's, I thought some people can. He said, first day, 10 paise. Second day, 10 square paise, which is one rupee. Third day, what is square of one rupee? One rupee. Fourth day, square of one rupee? One rupee. Like that. And then comes the real intelligent fellow, the third one. The third fellow comes and doesn't give anything. Hi, madam, and he goes. That also was acceptable. The principal did not find fault. Why? The clue is the previous answer. 10 paisa is Parvati K has written. 10 paisa is 0.1. So second day you have to give 0 0.01 rupee. Next day 0 0.01 square rupee. So finally, if you miss seven days, you don't have to give anything. <laughs> the last day, what you give the last day is the square value. So think differently, and a no hope situation can be saved by thinking differently creatively. Let's go to some old stories. What is happening in research is this actually, if you look at it. Research means take a different point of view, different design approach. Look at the old things in a new way. And when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's how research is going. Change the viewpoint, change your perspective. Give up giving up. This is how research is going on. I, I hope many of you will take up research in physics. So this is what you have to do to become a successful research scholar. So right now we will think of how to make a, a, how to make the tortoise win. Of course, in the story, the tortoise wins. But the tortoise wins because of a defect of the rabbit hair. It sleeps. It uh, sleeps when you should not sleep. So winning from the other fellow's foolishness is not the real winning. You have to win by yourself, your own strength. Because the other fellow may not be a fool. <laughs> okay? Other fellow may not be a fool. You can't count on your competitor becoming a, being a fool. So one of the methods, thinking differently, you can solve this problem. Right? That is one method of solving this problem. And let us go to another old story. What is the method? By now you would have guessed. Thinking differently, you can solve the problem. Right? Now, by now you know the trick. So you can answer the third one easily. The crow put some stones according to the story, and uh, but it won't work. I tell you, it won't work because you try that. If you put stones, will will you get drinkable water? That much water from that? You try it out. It depends on the level available. Of course, I think all my audiences suddenly become genius. Many people are suggesting the correct answer. <laughs> Good. I think my lecture is successful. Anyway, I am going to complete in a few minutes. You can, I will give you the next uh, take home, although I have not written as the next take home. It's an interesting website, Physics Girl. It is called Physics Girl. A very smart uh, Physics Girl there gives all the nice explanation about a lot of physics around you, physics happening around you. So you can note down that or you just search for Physics Girl in Google. You will see. Yeah, it's very interesting and inspiring, especially to all girl students. And it's very interesting anyway. So very nice explanation so far, whatever I have heard, uh, the explanation is technically correct. And if it is not correct, somebody will send you a mail and she will correct it anyway. So this is very nice. You should not miss it. You should note it down. Finally, OK, physics is tough to me. Physics is so stressful. Physics is such a complicated subject. It's like a mountain of Himalayas, Everest. How do I climb that? 
if you ask me about climbing everest i will say oh what no it's all complicated extreme cold and uh, you have to take oxygen and uh, you will be tired and uh, the yeti will come and eat you i won't go for that it's called an inconvenience for me but you ask tensing and hilari and many other people who have climbed they say it is an adventure so an adventure is an inconvenience rightly considered an inconvenience is an adventure often which is wrongly considered so we can there are two methods to climb the everest of physics that's what i am ending with there are two methods by which you can one oh you become very tense oh how am i going to do that it's all there mathematically it is too mathematical i have to learn this i have to learn that and then i have to try and lot of books to read how am i going to do that get stressed very tense you become very tense that is called the tensing method of climbing himalayas the tensing method of himalaya of physics okay if i am calling that as a tensing method what will be the other one called ah the hilarious method robi seon has uh, answered the other method the hilarious method of going and that is precisely what i want to introduce to you okay this is the hilarious method of learning physics go beyond the books try to think and think differently and try to get like the questions which i was asking it's all there in many sources go to the sources find out such interesting i already given you several i think five or six uh, source resources go through all of them and any one of them will be actually sufficient but you can go through whichever your time and uh, your time permits but what i have given is the bare minimum all that whatever i have given so far you should uh, that uh, those take homes you must uh, visit i am sure nobody will find it boring or useless or something so you will if you really want to see that the, this one hour you spend with me is uh, meaningful then you have to actually do that that will be the part okay now i am going to ask you a question okay you have been here listening to me for more than an hour i will ask you a question what was my first picture what are the first picture which i showed sometimes in interview they ask such questions yeah the first picture was an old man running naked or young man mother <laughs> a man running naked or the first picture and i said you should not have a such picture so i done a something which is not nice so how do i make good for it if i have done something wrong i must make good for it right so i am going to correct my mistake the first picture was that the last picture is going to be beautiful girl fine i think audience will be very much interested so let me go to the last picture so well, that is the first picture sorry that is the first picture many of you look like this i know boys are also there but within that understanding many of you look like this now now i want all of you to close your eyes and imagine what will happen after 20 years just look at this picture now don't think of anything else just look at the picture and just close your eyes and imagine how you will become this is how you are now how you will be after 20 years that's what you have to imagine and then you will see that of course physically you are all going to grow up. that's definitely there but when i said beautiful girl i didn't mean only physically also physically also not only physically by physics also okay you have guessed who it is right that is madam puri and she is a very inspirational figure please note that the one point i would like to make here i am not really telling that nobel prize should be the aim or nobel prize is the ultimate in the world no not really like that but it is a measure i am just saying that uh, it's a measure so that's a measure of success not that that is ultimate and that is the only thing in all why madam kuri as an inspirational figure because she got the nobel prize in physics not only that she got the nobel prize in chemistry again the details are given on the slide not only that she was the first woman to win the nobel prize the only woman today to win it two fields physics and chemistry the only person to win it in multiple sciences that so it is not just a lady who got google nobel prize it's much beyond that and today's cancer treatment all that came out of her discovery but at that time the researchers did not know about the dangers of radiation 
unfortunately mary curie passed away having cancer radiation because of the radiation out of the things which she handled now we know how to handle those but when she discovered it how does she know how to handle it but today she is she continues to save several 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 lives by sacrificing herself she continue to live several 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 lives so what is my message when i leave you you can read what maxwell asks when was the last time you did something for the first time if i say if i end this talk by telling all of you should become like madam curie you know, many most of you will think it's a fantastic lecture oh wow oh, very good message and all that but i am a realistic person i don't want to give a false if i say all of you become we are sure that all of you are not going to get nobel prize some of you may but all of you are not definitely going to get nobel prize so what is my message not to become a curie but become curious that's my message at the end of it that's what you can do there is no excuse for that and in the process you will become a genius and all that what is the, the best subject in the world i think all of we all of us will think uh, physics there is a lecture somebody gave a lecture in my institute and that was a fantastic speaker and a fantastic lecture at the end of the lecture i was thinking hey why did he take physics rather than chemistry he was telling chemistry is there in our life from the time i wake up onwards chemistry comes to me so i was so fascinated i was wondering why did i take up physics i should have taken chemistry such a thing which starts early in your life he said when you wake up what do you do you brush your teeth the paste chemistry and then you have your coffee food the chemistry like that i was very much impressed the next day when i woke up i was thinking what do i do when i wake up i open my eyes i get light into my eyes optics ha ah, ha this is more better than chemistry because the first thing i do after waking up is opening my eyes ha ah, then i was very happy the third day when i was uh, waking up i thought what do i do when first i wake up i open my eyes how do i open my eyes a lot of biological processes muscles blood uh, the information going through the nerves and all that oh biology is really a fantastic subject so i understood why biology is really a fantastic subject and then the next day when i woke up what do i do first i open my eyes oh my eyes my body then who am i what is when i'm opening my eye so is this eye different from my body because i said my body then it becomes philosophy okay let's stop there because that is meta science we are in metaphysics not in metaphysics but in physics only so coming back that's my message so don't worry about which topic you may some of you may become engineers but engineers also all engineering is based on physics today's physics is tomorrow's innale cheyara abadham cheyar kinnate aacharam aagam naalate shastram adaga so engineers use physics today what is called physics is tomorrow's engineering okay so dream the impossible this is the picture which every student must have what sri arobindo told is man may be a laboratory in which nature is making the superman nature is trying out to make a robot which is called the superman who knows we are all robots made by some uh, superior beings <laughs> okay if you do some experiment with some ants on a plate ants don't know if i pick up on ant it doesn't know where what has happened it just says you know higher dimension so we don't know some experiment is being done on all of us by someone who don't know who to become a superman so arvind says what we see around us is a laboratory where supermen are being made okay thank you fine thank you very much sir for your very valuable and interesting talk now i request all the participants those who have any queries to put it in the chat box yeah thanks sir fine i accept all your thanks with uh, humble attitude but uh, i don't have to write thanks <laughs> if 250 people write thanks it will be complicated
yeah i would value your feedback please give the feedback and uh, professor smita can send it to me afterwards yes we are collecting the feedback sir yeah i have already posted the google form in the chat box please fill it within 10 minutes to get your e certificate e certificate will be posted into your uh, registered email id i had taken uh, some about 10 15 minutes more than what i planned but i thought that anyway even if people have to go for another class or something the youtube is there you can see the rest of it later i think the youtube will be there right yeah. any time uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's why I didn't bother about the time we are recording it and it will be loaded into into our college youtube channel yeah. we are have an official youtube cha channel yeah, yeah, yeah. msc insight very it will be posted into it yeah very good i have seen uh, good lectures in many colleges a few colleges at least doing like that in kerala that is a very good thing because anybody gives any lecture everybody in the world can use it now, if you put it yeah in. thank you for all your nice comments in youtube uh, there is one question how newton discovered calculus any story or monologue available on it story and monologue are not available but uh, newton's case is very interesting i will tell you a related story not exactly an answer to your question newton at some stage at in his youth some 20 plus he was eager to know about his future so how to know about future he book about a book on he brought from the library book on astrology and started reading it and then uh, when he started reading it there were a lot of uh, Uh, diagrams of planetary positions and planets and all it must have been an ancient vaskaracharya type of book because that's the only book where astrology is mixed with astronomy and you will see all those things so whatever it is it's mentioned by carl sagan then he got interested in the geometry okay he he said okay then he left astrology and he left because from astrology he came to geometry and then he got a book on geometry and then try to understand what it is then he he bought another book on analytic geometry and then he found okay he was getting a lot of ideas how to get these ideas how to express these ideas then he found analytic geometry is not also sufficient so he wanted to buy a book on calculus but that is not available calculus was not available at that time so he invented calculus in other words newton found that to express his ideas in the language of uh, the language of the universe is mathematics to write it properly he doesn't have the mathematical tools so he had to develop the mathematical tools parallel suppose you want to make a building and you want bricks you think you think of bricks but then the bricks technology is not available then you invent how to make a brick and then make the or something like that no specific story one more question is the moon and sky is a free fall but why it doesn't fall on earth ha huh, that i thought i will leave it to you to find out <laughs> some people have written the answer also <laughs> the easy answer will be just to make some the, the like uh, some bird like centripetal force or centripetal force okay let's say uh, you throw a stone suppose you throw it with increasing velocity that's the that's the starting point to think you throw it it will come down you throw it again it will come down you throw it with more velocity then there is some velocity called the escape velocity okay then I'll look at it look up that and then you will see you what is the reason for the expansion of the universe nobody has found out the expansion <laughs> the reason for the expansion of the universe yeah it is against reality still our understanding about the big bang and how it happened is still uh, not very clear to give very uh, i mean not very good enough to give clear answers to such questions father of the experimental physics was galileo why because actually even the newton's laws are statements of some observations by galileo so he was what is the experiment he did you know he tried to find out if i throw something if i put something on the table nothing happens it just stays there if i tilt inclined plane then it starts moving if i tilt more and more it starts moving that that's how he started thinking about it so he was the real first experimenter he had the idea in some other form of the newton's laws so newton only the newton later put everything together in a nice uh, framework so galileo is the real 
the credit goes to galileo as the first experiment phone in here let me check the chat for any other question uh -huh. Which was first formulated in integration or differentiation? Actually, I don't know the answer. I guess it would have been differentiation. Is black hole the shortest path to another galaxy? Nobody knows the answer. You have to do research and you have to tell me. Does no more exist? And and Why matter and antimatter? There is something called the basic thing is symmetry. Symmetry in charge, symmetry in parity, symmetry in time. Symmetry in charge, okay, whatever is there, positive charge. Instead, you can have negative charge there. You can take an atom and uh, make it uh, ultra in the sense wherever positive charge is the negative charge. For example, Dirac found a particle which is exactly like the electron, but it has a positive charge. So that is considered to be the antimatter corresponding to. So that's the symmetry between uh, matter and antimatter. But then, in the observable universe, we have mostly seen only matter and not antimatter. So the symmetry seems to be broken, or we have not found out. Now, similarly, time. Time, if you make t equal to minus t, Newton's equation still work. But nobody has seen, everybody has seen only a bottle or a, uh, falling and breaking into pieces. Nobody has seen all the pieces coming back and becoming a bottle. So there seems to be an arrow of time. So there seems to be an asymmetry with time. If you run a movie backwards, everybody will know that you run the movie backwards. The other one is parity left right. You cannot put your left shoes on your right. So there are a lot of experiments going on. People have observed parity breaking in charge uh, time. And uh, so these experiments are still going on. We can't really talk about that. Continue. Uh, Harsha Rahim is asking, is time travel possible? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows the answer. <laughs> so physics is interesting because there are still many questions which are not answered. I forgot who, but uh, there was some research scholar who came to a guide and told, I want to do research in physics. And this was before, this was in 1900 or around that time. I want to do research in physics. Then the guide said, not much point in doing research in physics. Everything that has to be discovered is already discovered in the year 1900. Everything that has to be discovered is already discovered. Ah, Max Planck. So he said, don't do a waste your time. And uh, we can only uh, make it more and more accurate values of it for some more decimal places. But then you know what happened after 1900? Physics was never the same after 1900. So there are unanswered questions in physics. And that is why it is interesting. Wormhole and a black hole. Wormhole is supposed to be a pathway from one point in space time to another point. Whereas black hole, everything just goes and it doesn't come out. Except some radiation which is called the hair of the black hole. And the other question is about dimension. Let's look at dimension like this. If you have a point, it's zero dimension. Now, move the point perpendicular to itself. Move a point perpendicular to itself. Then you get a line, one dimension. Take a line, move it perpendicular to itself. Then you get a plane, two dimensions. Take a plane, move it perpendicular to itself. Then you get a plane, a, a 3D object. If you move a plane, you get a 3D object. Now, take a 3D object, move it perpendicular to itself. How do you do that? Actually, it is very easy. What do you mean by perpendicular in the 3D? You just keep the 3D object in your room. Go and come back tomorrow. You are moved in time. That is the fourth dimension. Time is the fourth dimension. But theories are there in 11 dimensions now. The universe is actually so complicated that we, we haven't still fully understood it. I'm not telling that it will be never understood or anything like that. 
at least many things which are not understood earlier in 1900 are understood in 2000 and 2000. So more things will be understood in uh, 3000. But uh, right now there are many things which are not understood. Nidhu Nidhi is asking, sir, is the way of teaching physics in our schools correct? Do we have to go for physics education research on how to teach physics? Yes, you take anything. People, Some people say that uh, teaching is an art. Teaching is an art. I am gifted with teaching or I am not gifted with teaching. So that's so I can teach. No, that is wrong attitude. You take art, music. It all goes with training. Any musician becomes a better musician if you if you undergo training. So there is always this question, Jai Chandra Nanda it paada, Yeshwa Samai 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 it paada, classical music. The point is, genius may be there, one or two who can do that, but in general, any art or science or anything, including teaching, requires training. Requires training. Training, okay, how do you get the training? It's that uh, you finish your uh, basic degree what requirement, and then you are appointed. There is no training, teacher training for uh, college teachers, school teachers who undergo some. Level. So, so how do we, what do we do about station? Teachers can only attend uh, the faculty development programs and conduct such programs. And then uh, you can, or there are a lot of resources. The internet is a fantastic place because there is so much of information. So it's very useful. But the internet is also a useless space because there is so much of information. You don't know which one to look at. So if you're lucky, you will come across some good sites which will give you nice, or if somebody gives you the right advice, there may be websites which can give you teaching, even teaching, teaching methodology. There is a lot of research on teaching methodology. And for the children as students there, I would like to tell you something futuristic. Many, many of you may become teachers, but the way you teach is going to be very different from how your teachers are teaching today. Because there are a lot of changes in the paradigm. See, for example, if I give a fantastic lecture, what will my student come and tell you? Sir, your lecture was OK, but the other professor in MIT gave a fantastic lecture on YouTube. So teachers face such a situation. So what are people going to do? This is called flipped class. There's a flipped class. So that lecture material will be given to you up front. You will be asked to go through it. And instead of standing on the platform and giving a lecture, the teacher will walk around you and see how you are working out the problem. So people like me, easy. I can retire in a few years without any teaching or learning any new things. But when you are going to become a teacher, you have a tough time because you have to learn new methods of teaching. There will not be any more, I mean, not now. After several years, by the time the plus two student becomes a lecturer, there won't be, lecturing will not be the main method. Not that I go to the my previous notes and go and give a lecture. That is not going to work. So material will be given to you, and you will be asked to work out problems. You will help people in working on problems. Pournami has written about two methods of climbing mountain. See, it's easy to remember who climbed the mountain first? Tensing and hilarious. So the other method is the tensing method. But you must remember, I am not making fun of the two people. I don't know whether how, how they were in their real life, whether they were hilarious or tense. I'm just making fun of the words. I have great respect for both tensing and the hilarious. Somebody wants to discuss Corona. Of course, the other Corona, the, the nice Corona, not the <laughs> Corona. I do not know really on the latest research is on campfire phenomenon. Magnetic field of Earth is itself very complicated. People still have a lot of theories about it. First, they thought there is a magnet buried. Then there are a lot of See, finally, in the latest understanding it is you don't need actually iron, cobalt, nickel to become uh, to get a mag to get magnetism. Magnetism can occur out of spins various reasons. First, people were thinking there are ghosts inside the magnet. That is why it is able to lift. Up. And what do you believe now? It, you, know, you no longer believe in ghosts, so only you think that there are spins. People said there are spins within in the magnet, and that is the spins align and all that. And now, spins are also not the latest picture. It's electron 
orbits. Orbiting electrons is what is there in the magnet. That is the latest picture. So the pictures keep changing. A, an idea becomes a scientific idea. It becomes physics or science when it can be it, it is universal. I do the experiment, you do the experiment, you get the same result. Or if you don't get the same result, you know why you missed the result. There are some experimental parameters. So that is a universality. And then you should be able to predict. You should be able to predict. And once you predict something, and that uh, prediction should be, you should, uh, that, that's what uh, even uh, general theory of relativity was proved by experiment, by observation rather than experiment, which was the observation of some phenomena, not. Uh, so this is how it is. And now that uh, uh, initially some somebody told uh, you are expecting something about you, the career and uh, all that, the point to understand is BSc is not sufficient to become a physicist. Now, BSc is not the only thing. So when you are doing BSc, suppose you are now in a BSc course, you have to make the best out of it by going to the various resources. If you did not understand what your teacher told about uh, a particular topic, classical mechanics, it's not a problem. You don't worry about it. You can attend lectures by anyone in the world. All people in the world, uh, even uh, like interesting lectures, MIT, wherever, IIT, everywhere. Those lectures are there in YouTube. So you read that particular topic which you could not uh, understand. You cannot be reading, uh, uh, going through all the lectures. You listen to a few people and whomever, is, whomever you think is the best in your opinion that you can or you ask somebody teacher or senior or something and then go to that uh, lecture and okay today i didn't understand what is lagrangian then you listen to only that part which explains lagrangian and uh, you will so that way you improve your uh, knowledge into this and try to get into some institute like iit where you can do msc you know that iit doesn't end with je Many people think that IIT is for BTEC, so you write JE, if you get in, you go to IIT. Otherwise, the IIT doors are closed. No. If you don't get into JE, you can still go, you can do your engineering and go for post, uh, I mean, uh, post gadgets. You can go for MSc. You can, many people don't know that there is an MSc course in IIT. MSc in physics, for example, chemistry, all. So you do your BSc properly, write the competitive exam. Yeah, there is a competition, there is an exam. You write that, and then you will become a proud student of the IIT. And uh, Professor Smita is one of them. I had uh, taught her, and she came here. So many people from Kerala, why I'm telling that is, many people from many students from Kerala do come. OK, JE is not the only door to IIT. You can do your BSc, and then try to get into any IIT, which offers an MSc in physics. Even if you come through JE, there is a physics course, five-year integrated physics course in some of the IITs. Okay, so you do MSc, and then uh, you get the benefit of IIT. You know, why I'm telling benefit of IITs, you get uh, more opportunities, you will have, uh, uh, thus you can ask uh, Professor Smith, she will tell you. Okay, now, suppose you don't miss that also, I don't get MSc in uh, IIT, then what do I do? PhD is available for you, you can do, you can do PhD in IIT. Okay, then still you will get the fly graph. IIT or any other? ISER, for example, such institutes. Okay, even if you don't get PhD, postdoc, you can come as a postdoc. So, JE is not the end of IIT or at such top institutions in anywhere or abroad. Not now the world is becoming, education is becoming really universal. And there are more uh, abroad universities, uh, foreign universities coming to India and all that. It's not only IIT. I know about IIT, so I'm talking about IIT. That's other institute. Okay, my point is. The specific point I would like to make to all students who are doing pre-degree and BSc and interested in physics is, unfortunately, mathematical toolbox is not given the correct, the importance that it deserves. So if you have any interest or any uh, idea of going for higher studies in physics, you must pay attention to mathematics beyond what is done in your physics courses. Working out problems. Nobody asks in a higher institute, write down Newton's law and give three examples. That question is not there in any exam paper of institute like ISERS, IITs, IASC. What will be the question? Question will be at a higher level. 
you will be given a situation and you will be asked to solve it using the principles which you learn so that is where you have to it's not just remembering it's just applying it i was trying to give you a taste of it through some of these uh, examples so try to learn that art going beyond what they there in the text and mathematical that's the most important thing mathematical see for example when uh, the iit exams were uh, the previously each iit used to conduct the msc entrance exam for itself so in our iit most people used to be from kerala but now it is a national exam and number of people from kerala has reduced people from bengal west bengal people from andhra pradesh are coming in larger numbers why simple reason andhra pradesh is strong in mathematics their syllabus the way they teach physics is using mathematics as a language west bengal they have a respect for science. not the top all the top students do not go for engineering they have a respect for science basically and mathematics they do it in the proper way of so mathematics take care of your differential equations calculus uh, in general calculus and particularly differential equations and all that and uh, mainly that mainly calculus and that is a language of physics just i we discuss about newton and now that so that is one point which you may be missing or you may not be aware of when you are in kerala tamil nadu etc that you have to take care of your use of first the techniques tools which are taught in the math, subsidiary mathematics and then it will be useful in physics so bsc physics alone doesn't make you a scientist you have to necessarily go through msc and phd that is what you have to keep in mind and of course there are scientist jobs in places like isro drdo and all that. so that's also there all that are competitive so an ordinary bsc is not sufficient you can also do courses from full course by other universities and uh, see all syllabus and curricula are for average students any class in standard school anything is for an average student if you think you are a bit above average you can make use of it instead of placing around you can do a course given by another university many free courses are there some of the courses are there where, where you can even get a degree but for that you may have to pay so that doesn't matter the getting an official degree that doesn't matter you have to learn that's more important and try to get into institutes by other institutes where research is going on during your summer uh, internship and all that is another clue to get exposure to that there are several students who have come to our laboratories and then they have become scientists all over the world so but of course if 2000 people write to me i can take only one or two but then there are other institutes other professors you can write to them i think that's about the career part of it i would like to say let me see if any more uh, sri um sri bala is asking hmm. why according to you restrict students from entering a field of research i'm not how can one select a research area research area when you select a research area you have to think of a few things first it must trigger your interest but then there is a problem all of us are interested in physics mainly because of astronomy or something like that, or something generally but if you take the statistics i have seen so many students out of 100 i think 70 people are interested 70% is interested in doing astronomy because it's fascinating to think of uh, big bang and universe and all that but as a research field that may not be the most promising one there are fantastic things happening everywhere in, in any other fields for example nanotechnology biophysics biophysics is another thing which is coming so you have to see what your interests are and more interestingly what your talent is suppose i am very much very good in mathematics i understand and i do problems and then i can even go for a theoretical physics including theoretical astronomy or theoretical energy physics and all that but if i am more of a doer then i should go for an experimental field but both are required but relatively even then somebody may be a better doer than a better thinker that way not thinker rather mathematics mathematics is the language of physics don't try to become a theoretical physicist if your mathematics foundations are shaky okay if you can uh, make it better fine then we can do it. that is one thing and there are uh, material science oriented researches where uh, chemistry knowledge or interest will be useful so don't join a research project in material science related developing a material medium and all that if you don't like chemistry some people don't like chemistry i find organic chemistry very tough when my sons were in 10th standard i found the organic chemistry book so complicated uh, 12th 12th 
I was thinking that, oh, how do these people get good marks in that? So, some it's people's attitude. Biology. If you don't like biology, if you are not interested in that, don't go for biophysics. On the other hand, if you're interested, biophysics, the physics of living things, is a very interesting topic. Very little is known about it. And many things, the, uh, many new discoveries are not going to come in the next century on bio and biophysics. So if you are if you have an interest in that, you can try to go in that direction. It's coming up. Previously, people thought that biology students thought that, oh, that mathematics and all we don't want, let's say. And mathematics uh, physics students thought that oh, we don't want biology. They, they don't generally like that. But today, mathematics has invaded all fields. Even if you want to do biology, if you want to do genetics and all that, you have mathematics. So there is no escape from mathematics, which is the language of science. So bio, the areas, as far as areas are concerned, yes, many interesting things are happening in nanotechnology, material science, astronomy, gravitational waves, everywhere. But astronomy and gravitational waves are not the only physics in things which are interesting. And finally, you would join that, you may be, okay, somebody was telling, the decay of the fundamental constants, you know, the gravitational constant decays. Actually, it's not a constant. So over several years, uh, so some people who are doing research in that, they just think they, get, they just wait for it to decay. Four years, it doesn't decay. So you write a PhD thesis, though it doesn't decay. <laughs> it's like that. So actually, if you go into that research, it may not be as interesting as, I, as you think from outside. So have a broader mind. And uh, you have to do your MSc. At that stage only, you will know. After doing the MSc first year, you take some elective courses if they are available in your college. And then you will get a better perspective of what it is. So do your BSc properly, treating all parts equally, and mathematics also as a part of physics. That's how you have to do your BSc. Uh, and then after that, when you go to post graduation, you must go. If you want to become a physicist, you have to do that. And when you go there, you must uh, think of you, you slowly you will come up come to know about various fields and then you can pick what what fascinates you not only what fascinates you what fascinates you when you go to research it is what you do whether it is going to be fascinating or not okay in any of these fields fascinating discoveries research is finding something new and that is fascinating so without a prejudice at msc level you see what are your orientations your talents and where do you think you can do well? And then, of course, a frontier area. All research is in frontier area. All PhD students have to publish new research to get their degree. So that's the perspective of that. Somebody talks about interdisciplinary. Yes, interdisciplinary uh, research is also coming up in a big way. And uh, just like, uh, uh, see, physics, chemistry, all those things came after some centuries only, not in the very beginning. Only knowledge was there. And later, Leonardo da Vinci is a physicist or biologist or an artist. But now physics, chemistry, etc. After several years, it will not be anymore uh, physics, chemistry. It may be interdisciplinary. So interdisciplinary areas are also. Uh, but for that, first you have to become good in your own discipline, basic discipline. Yeah, somebody asked about a YouTube channel. I don't have my own YouTube channel. I have not also given too many lectures on YouTube, but I am planning to make one. One more question is there. Can you please explain briefly non-linearity based on polarization? Ah, that is my field. Actually, I written a book on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I written a book on topics. The world is not linear. The world is non-linear in all sense, not only in physics sense. How do you know? Suppose one banana is five rupees. I don't know what is the price in Kerala now. But if one banana is, uh, what is the price of five bananas? Not 12 into by 60, you will not give that. If you buy 12, you will get a discount. So it is not linear. The world is not linear. What about physics? Before coming to polarization, let's talk about stress strain. So there is uh, the, there is the stress. If stress increases, strain increases. You know that, right? And if the stress increases too much, then what happens? Strain doesn't increase linearly. It, the wire breaks. Okay, so that's what happens when there is too much of stress. And what will people do when there is too much of stress? They take a rope and hang on to a hook. That is called Hooke's law. What is Hooke's law? 
there is a region in which strain is proportional to stress. Beyond that, something odd happens. So this is called the Hooke's law region. Now coming to the question, what happens when the light is uh, traveling in the medium? Light is interacting with matter and light is traveling in the medium. What light sees it? The light, what light causes is polarization because matter is charged. Matter consists of positive and negative charges. So it causes polarization. And what is polarization? Polarization means pulling plus and minus apart. So that's what uh, happens. So when light, the light is an electromagnetic oscillation. Please remember, light is an electromagnetic oscillation. The value of the electric field keeps changing the magnetic field also. So that changes at a tremendous frequency. What frequency? 10 power 14, 10 power 16, that's the frequency. It's per second. And that is going on. And what will happen to the charges? Charges also move like that. And the way the charges move, if they're linear, let's say, in the sense there's a proportionality between the polarization, the polarization generated and the electric field. There is a proportionality. More field, more polarization. Then it is called linear optics. Then light just passes through as nothing happens through the glass plate. Okay? But actually, all you know from a pendulum example, which is the real uh, ideal pendulum, single pendulum, when sine theta equal to theta, okay, then this, your pendulum becomes a simple pendulum. But sine theta can never become equal to theta. So it is not linear. If the acceleration is proportional to theta, the angle of the pendulum, then it is linear. But if it is proportional to sine theta, it is not linear. So similarly, in this case, also, we have an oscillation, something like the, like the pendulum. We have an oscillation between the positive and negative charge. Where are the positive and negative coming from? Matter is made up of positive and negative. Why do they, be, why do they oscillate? Because the electric field is jumping up and down at 10 power 14 minutes. Electric field is increasing, decreasing, and changing direction. So the charges keep uh, oscillating. This is called the dipole picture. This is called the dipole picture. There are other things also, but dipole picture is a simpler example. Now this oscillation becomes you know, deviates from linearity. So just like the high stress leads to some peculiar behavior, high value of the electric field causes polarization to become non-linear. So P is not proportional to chi E, but something else. That's non-linear. So basically, it happens from what happens in the pendulum. Theta is not sine theta, large oscillations. Large cost and the effect is not linear. That's it. So there is a query about internship programs provided by IIT or ISER. Yeah, uh, I know very clearly what IIT Madras and other IITs and ISERs also have this. And now there are a large number of IITs also. What we advertise towards the summer, we advertise a summer intent program. And people are asked to apply in the main website, IIT website, it will be there. And people apply for that. And from that, there is a selection procedure because we can't accommodate all the uh, applicants. Our IIT typically takes about 30 students for some selected on some criteria like your grade, your statement which you make, and teachers' recommendations, and all that goes into that. And these students will be given a training, internship training. Similarly, other IITs have their own methods. One trick is that the newer IITs also have that. And many people um, people crowd around the older IITs, Delhi, Bombay, Kanpur, uh, and all that. So there may be more vacancy in newer uh, IITs. And newer IITs are in no way inferior or anything to the older IITs. They're also, nowadays, getting a faculty post in IIT is very difficult. I, people like me, somehow managed in the olden times. But nowadays, it's very difficult, very competitive. So the newer IITs also have very competitive people like ISIS, same story. Um, but again, one one one. another clue will be if some of your teachers, you can go through the teachers and they have, they know somebody or something, that becomes easier. Otherwise, how do, as a professor, if I get uh, 100 applications, how do I, what do I do? Sometimes I won't be able to even reply to it because there are too many requests like that. So what I replaced, even if you, some of you write, I will replace the same thing. Go to the website and see the program and apply accordingly. But if you don't get an individual reply, don't uh, worry. There are too many uh, applications. Somebody asked about uh, TAFR. Yeah, TAFR is 
is very good, perhaps the top research institute in India. Uh, top or not depends not only on the institute, but also on the lab and uh, the, the situation. So, but in general, TAFR is an excellent institute. And the difference between the guides in PAFR and guides in IIT is that guides in IIT are also teachers. They have to teach also for 50% of the time and do research for the 50%. But in TAFR, 100%, they will be doing only research. Teaching is much less there. So you can expect better attention from the guides there. So if you like more independence and occasional guidance, the other institutes. If you want a lot of guidance, then probably you may have to go to the field. Of course, AFR is very competitive. There is a question regarding uh, studying geology and uh, forensic science. Yeah, these things are uh, rather interdisciplinary and they're also coming up uh, in a big way and uh, i will just give one hint of that the gems the gems gems are uh, the precious stones which have very interesting color and the secret of the color was not even understood till many something like 50 years back it has to do with nanotechnology it has to do with nano interactions so physics of these things are becoming more and more interesting more and more discoveries are being made and you may also do with some um, the jewels which you got from moon and all that which people get from moon so many interesting things are happening there. And the other one was geology and uh, what are the other topic? Uh, forensic. Forensic science. Ah, forensic. Yeah. Forensic science. See, forensics, uh, uh, they, uh, see, for example, if you touch something, any very surface, I mean, if you touch anywhere, you have, uh, you deposit actually a few molecules of some set or something, and which is unique to you. And you can shine a high power laser onto that it will give a pattern just like your fingerprint so very easily people can identify just like fingerprint identification but the thief may not know be aware of that even touching somewhere and all that fingerprint he will be careful not to put the fingerprint but merely touching that also can leave a few molecules out so this for example many of the crimes are now now being investigated with the mobile with the mobile connection and uh, what tracing the mobile i used to wonder what would have happened if mobiles were not there mobiles are always discovered only some 20 30 years back before that there is no mobile phone how did the police people work and get catch the thief so uh, uh, technological advances related to physics have a big relevance and it is becoming more and more prominent in forensics also same thing with archaeology Dating, archaeology is related to physics through dating, carbon dating, the isotopes, the abundance of isotopes. Isotopes have a half lifetime. So, knowing how much of isotopes are today, you can work back and say when, when was that. There is a query about data science. Recently, I also got an invitation from IIT Madras about data science schools. Is it provided? by IT Madras? Yeah, there is a BSc course on that. It is newly started. It will be there in the website. Newly started uh -huh. course, which is an open course. Anybody can enter. BSc course on it's an online course, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. On data science, you will get a degree from it. Okay. Purnima is asking, is IAC or IIT best for MSc physics? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you should answer that. I mean, it's not, see, we should not have a narrow mind and say, which, whatever, wherever in Sudan, there it is the best and all that. I would say both are fine. Both are fine. It depends on what you do there, <laughs> how you manage there once you enter it. See, there are, uh, okay, let's say IAS is better than IIT. Let's say IIT Delhi. Let's say, let's say that. Because some ranking or something like that. Then, suppose you go to the topper, top institute and don't work very well. Uh, don't do the assignments properly, and uh, your friend goes to the lower institute and does all that properly, then you will be the winner in the end. So, it also okay, you can say for the first uh, approximation, all this though some IIT, our IIT gets number one uh, for the last few years, but I don't really uh, give much importance to that. IIT Delhi, IIT, I have seen other IITs, IIT Delhi, IIT Kanpu, they're all equally good. It's not really that one IIT is superior to other IIT and uh, other institutes also. So it is more, okay, all this institute you can take on par and what you do there is more important. 
just like the I told about the Catherine Cox discovery on genius. Oh yeah, I didn't answer the question. Somebody has uh, asked uh, what happens uh, when you fall to the center of the earth. Center of the earth. What happens when you reach the center of the earth? When you reach there, you have a velocity. So according to Newton's first law, you continue with that velocity. And when you move there, the center of earth is attracting you back. So your velocity decreases. It decreases to such an extent, if you actually put in the numbers, you will see that by the time you come to the other end of the tunnel, you have zero velocity. So you cannot cross to the other side, to the American, uh, US. You will, by the time you will fall back, because the gravity is attracting you. The story is like what you started initially. So you will go back there. And then it continues. And then it becomes oscillation. If there is no friction, it becomes into harmonic oscillation forever. So now I think it's almost one o'clock now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people will be hungry. <laughs> but still, people are asking questions. I think. So you can yeah. some uh, uh, questions which are not answered and which can be answered. Black hole, home wall, and all that. I don't know much about it. So I heard that. Uh, one is asking about how can I be a project assistant or research assistant? Project assistant and research assistant. There are uh, there is a website. It's called ICSR, in, uh, Industrial Consultancy and Sponsored Research. It is linked to the IIT. There you can put your bio data, and it's like an employment exchange. You may be called when there is a vacancy. But these vacancies, project vacancies happen at random. It's not at one particular time. When a professor gets a project from the government, he wants to appoint some people there like that. But in general, people prefer a PhD student to work in that. So rather than appointing somebody ad hoc, then we prefer to wait for the June or January uh, advertisement and then take a student from that. Because it will be ideal for everyone if the student also does PhD in the problem. Well, getting the salary as a project assistant, you can also do your PhD. That is so. At that age, you would like to have some money. After you. That's why PhD scholarships are there. Joining ASRO, ISRO and all that, you have to look at their website. You have to look for their advertisements. The blue color of flame the, in space, somebody has reminded me. The definition, uh, the reason is the, the thing. If it is blue, is the original color. And if it is not blue, it is due to carbon. A lot of carbon particles are generated in, if it is here, in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide is there in the atmosphere. So carbon particles, as such, the particles may look black. When they scatter a lot of light, then it becomes, it scatters all wavelengths and you get yellow color or red color, depending also on the size of the particles. If these things are not there, it will be perfectly blue. One question is regarding future technology. Yeah, that I had uh, sort of explained. Any field where uh, uh, activity is going on is interesting. So strengthen your basic physics, and then you can go to try to get into a good institute. And then what is best there you choose. Again, as I said, if you are not interested in chemistry, don't go to material science. If you are not interested in biology, don't go to biological science. If you are weak in mathematics, don't go to theoretical physics. If you are weak in uh, mathematics, first make strong yourself strong and then go to anything. Shall we wind up, sir? I hope all uh, the participants have filled Google form, which was shared. Uh, your certificates will be issued into your a registered email ID. Please take care to fill the details correctly without any mistakes. One more question is there any book recommendation for calculus? Yeah, actually, I, I had thought of putting that also as one of the gifts. There is something called Firefighting with Mathematics. I forgot the author's name. You can Google it. Firefighting. Maybe I can Google it. Firefighting with Mathematics.